did you just say that like now it's time to become a champion? And he's like, yeah, dude, I've been saying this every day. Like, I, like I'm on this now, Dane. Like, do you not believe me? Like, he literally starts <laughs> like coming at me, dude. Let's let's go, Junior. Yeah, good for him. And man. you need to watch some Sam Sulek to get this even more. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Garage Strength Podcast, and I'm here with soon-to-be four-time co-author of the year, currently the king of the PA Press, Earl Kunkel. Yo, I'm never losing that throne. I refuse to let it go. Ooh, ooh. Even if someone outlifts me, they still don't have it. Like, they have to be in Pennsylvania. <laughs> to, um, to do the PA Press. Yeah, and they have to, like, come take the hypothetical crown, like, to. We like, should make a real one. Yeah. You should get the audience to make you a crown. Yeah, that would be cool. Someone out there, Discord, Reddit, like, subscribe on YouTube or whatever, whatever your favorite listening device. Podcast, Podcast, Podcast apps. Podcast apps. Yeah. Send us. And maybe some of our clips on Instagram. Yeah. Which somebody commented today on our Garage Strength Podcast short. Didn't even know Brother had a podcast. <laughs> oh, I did see yeah. that. <laughs> I saw that one, too. I started laughing. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, you, we do. We do have a podcast, and somebody in that audience, hopefully if you're streaming right now, you have a vision of a hypothetical crown that we can cut out, almost like a Burger King crown. Maybe that would be great. Yeah. Maybe I will stop at one of those like Burger King, get like an Impossible Whopper or something like that, <laughs> and, and, and just, just to rock a crown. Yeah, how do you get, do you get this in Happy Meal? Or, well, I don't Happy know. Happy Meal is McDonald's, I yeah. think. I have no idea. Whatever I haven't been those. to one of those joints in like a lifetime, it feels like. like yeah i do need a crown like king booker dude i don't know if i've been to a fast food restaurant D have you eaten pizza in the last month You've been to Chipotle. i'm saying like a tradition oh, okay. i have had pizza in the last month yeah. if you eat pizza pizza is fast food I don't i'm care. i'm saying like a traditional burger spot like mcdonald's oh like the franchise yeah. like essentially american culture yeah yeah i like i'll even say this the the only time Interstate i've only ever had chick-fil-a twice and one time i, I had, refused to eat there so one time i had chick-fil-a here and then one time i got these free coupons and lincoln wanted to go for ice hockey and yeah. i took them That's i just like, don't eat there because it's meat yeah <laughs> I, I don't know if they have i mean i think they have salads i feel like well we're gonna talk about um sam sulik today Sam Sulek eats, I'm assuming, a very massive amount of meat. I've seen yeah. his bowls of cereal. But we're going to come at it from a, what his effect and impact potentially is, what it is, what it might be, what it could be on athletes and just getting people generally involved in lifting and like sports training from like as this YouTube guy, I guess, Jason was telling me at the beginning of the year he had like a thousand subs. Yeah. And now like it's November and he's over like 2.3 million. Yeah. So, like, what type of impact that makes, like, what who his audience is. Like, we don't know exactly, but we're assuming it's someone who's probably interested in lifting weights in some way yeah, and sees this person as, like, you know, a representation of people who lift weights and how that could be positive for the community, much like, I don't know, probably, like, 15 years ago now, CrossFit was for, yeah. like, weightlifting, right? Yeah. Got a bunch of people interested in this, well, interested in CrossFit, and then everyone kind of shot in a different way. And then more people got into weightlifting and things like that, all that cool stuff. That's that's interesting. Like, and I think I, I want to just comment on it right away. Yeah, that's go ahead. It. But I, I, I've thought about it as like it. It's this phenomena that reminds me of you see somebody like Chris Bumstead, and he seems like otherworldly. He seems like he's like fake. Like it's just like. This dude who's out there and he's like untouchable. And I think and and I mean one competitively he basically has been in his career for the most part, but also like uh, you you see him and Larry Wheels and they're just like you don't think that you can relate to them. And the one thing I was going to say right away with Sam Sulik is like he reminds me of like the group of meatheads that I including myself that we hung out with, you know, like when we first were like just starting to goon out lifting, and I think that's like the major appeal is that kids who consume this content, some of them just consume it because they like the culture, but some of them consume it because they want to see what what people are doing, and then they go do it themselves. And it and it's like the George W. Bush phenomena as of like 
I voted for him because he reminded me of my I'm not I'm saying like people at the time voted for him because they reminded them of the, their neighbors. And I think that's like an interesting aspect behind what does Sulik. that say about what they think of their neighbors? <laughs> so the interest now I'm using that as an example with Sulik where it's like he's mer- very much so like a relatable figure that is like you know we have got sw- I feel like we sort of have our version of Sam Sulik here, Swole Kyle. And he's very similar to Sulik in the sense of like uh, the peculiarities and the, the the mannerisms. And also he's just freakishly strong. And it's like, I think that's like one of the interesting parts. Jason was showing me a video of Sam Sulik to like sort of make him seem relatable. He had his like iPhone like at the camera to like film himself. Didn't even try to block the iPhone out that you couldn't see it. And has it like duct taped up to like the tripod to like hold it in place where it's at. And it's just like, all right, man, you're making it work how you can make it work. Um, So like something like that, it's just like, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to share it with the world. Here's how I'm going to go present it to people. And, oh, I forgot my duct tape showing right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny because I also think some of that could also be potentially planned. Stuff like that, I actually am like. That's also you got your like, tin foil hat on right now. It's also like meme ish. It's like very Reddit Reddit ish. Okay. And like, dude, people do that because they like. It's like the cool thing to do. It's so contrarian. Like it's literally like the like that's the other thing. And like, dude, he might not have planned that, but like, some people actually do. It's do like that. your favorite joke, right? Which one? The. I used to do drugs. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Shoot, we just had this conversation <laughs> yeah. last night. I still night. do drugs, but yeah. I used to do them too. It's funny because I picked up that shirt this morning and I was like, I'm not going to wear my Mitch Hedberg shirt this morning because <laughs> I just thought about him last night. I only try to wear it when I think about him like once in a while. <laughs> right, like that's that same type of humor, right? Like yeah. it's it's like low key, like some people think it's awful. Like yeah. that's not funny at all. And like other people are like dying on the floor laughing yes. at stuff like yes. that. Yes, 100%. I have a buddy who... Um, know him for music he like he's a he films though like uh he basically he sent me a video he's like oh i'm filming jimmy buckets like he was basically vi- doing the video camera i guess he had the camera on the miami heat yeah with jimmy buckets right like that right. was his job for the day to follow him but um every time i ha- like he can animate plays music like he's kind of he's really great musician and he was uh but every time you hang out with him you have to be on your toes Cause you never know when he's going to throw out a pun and just like, you're going to start dying laughing. Like he, he just has like comedic timing that way. Right. And sometimes you see people like I, I've been around him when other people like just aren't on that communication level Yeah. Or they don't, and he just strikes out and yeah, it's, yeah. and it's not like he's trying, like he's not doing anything audience, he doesn't they don't do. Get, they don't get yeah. It. And it's like, who's, and you can see people like looking confused and it's like, who's this guy. And then there's right. like two other people just dying laughing right, at everything. Right. And then they think they're like, he's making fun of them in some way. It's just, no, he's just clever okay, constantly so, like so that. So I think that, that, that says a, that says a lot. And, and where I would go with that is like, okay, MF Doom now, especially since he's passed away, huge explosion of his his music, essentially because of Reddit. Okay, and now, dude, I knew about MF Doom when I was a kid because of OKPlayer.com. Yes, like yes, yeah, but I mean, I would actually relate that, and even like early uh, early Napster, Soulseek, like those those file sharing sites mm. were sort of LimeWire, like, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they were like. I, and honestly, I think cooler versions of Reddit. I really do because you could communicate <laughs> with the people that you were sharing the files with and just get more get more information from them uh, and get direct content from them. Where I'm going with this from relating it to Sulik is that, and what you just described is like, there's like specific types of comedy. Like black comedy is a very specific type. Uh, One liner is a very, very specific type. Then you, you know, Then you look at somebody like Bill Burr and he's, He's more, he can, he can create a more general audience and he's, he's not like one specific type. He's, and that's probably why he's a much more popular uh, comedian. He he can appeal to a larger audience because they, the audience has more of the touch points to understand why the joke's funny. Yeah. And it, and it goes back to, I mean, not to throw Jason under the bus. Jason doesn't like dick and fart jokes. And, and so 
the that audience becomes very precise but then somebody who likes dick and fart jokes uh, they're over here and that's honestly <laughs> that's honestly how i think about this and the way i'm relating this is that farts will never not be funny <laughs> there's there's such specific types of content consumers that are so freaking niche and someone comes along very occasionally and honestly i think hip-hop is looking for like the next doom essentially right now like they're looking for that as far as the underground is concerned yeah i think there's a couple groups can you find the underground on the internet or does it not exist there anymore i think you can because of social media i, I think you oh, can man. but you they get bigger faster i have this theory it has not come to fruition i don't know if it does but the underground no longer exists on the internet because of social, probably. Well, because to actually truly be underground, you you almost have to become exclusionary, yeah, right? Like that was yeah. one of the things that did it. So the easiest way to make yourself exclusive is to leave the internet and go completely analog. Yeah, with yeah. all your stuff. I don't, uh, it's almost. I mean, it's dude. It's like a. Uh, so I listen to. Yeah, you always call it Euro trash, but some of the the. I like my techno beats. Yeah. So so some of the electronic stuff. I listen to group therapy every friday and they have a podcast it's a two hour long podcast like new releases then they have some throwbacks it's interesting because they used to be like that underground but then they created their own label they started to do their own thing and now they're huge have you ever seen uh, we're like totally off topic but you ever see the people the djs who do the live sets on twitch now too yeah 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 and things uh, like yeah that. so i mean I, I i followed a lot of that during covid like um yeah I think Club the point quarantine. we're trying to make is Sam Sulik is a unique content creator. Yes. Around a niche audience. And maybe we got on the tinfoil thing about how well, like these th odd things for memes within lifting is kind of what contributes to his popularity potentially. Yeah. And I think the thing is, is what else contributes to someone like, I, I don't, I don't know if I want to say Bill Burr, but like, okay. So, so this is a good example. Dana me one and saw Bill Burr at uh, yeah, Hershey. Hershey. Is that yeah that I I, I mean he's a our great, wives were with us too yeah <laughs> is that if you okay so let's use this you look at Doom and 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 one one big thing is that MF Doom has like if if you ask every like pop rapper right now yeah he's, they almost all will say he's one of their influences almost all of them will say this have you ever seen the video of Earl Sweatshirt and Tyler the Creator meeting them and like sort of like fanboying out going, yeah I uh, haven't seen that but but that's essentially like. That's a good example. Now, the thing is, is like he he was somebody who was super, super niche, but then crossed over into the general pop. And that's what I see with him, with Sam Sulik. It's like he's got this super niche uh, following um, of of meathead bros his age. Yeah, because right? I don't want to say 2.3 million isn't a lot of people because it is a lot of people, but it's still niche in the larger scope of seven closing in on 8 billion people yeah 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 now the interesting part too is that he then relates to like you know i can relate to him because i have guys here that train that are similar to him but also like dudes like i'm thinking about someone like dave tater or guys that that are like like pillars in the bodybuilding community also he appeals to them because of his training he's doing crazy partial reps a lot a lot of times um, so now also the sports scientists are starting to break down his training and they're like, Oh, look, he's using partial range of motion. well, this, this study says that, Oh, he also does full crazy range of motion. This study says this. So it's interesting because he's crossing the barriers of all of these pocket groups. And that's what makes him so popular. I want to touch on that idea that you bring up there, like the crossing over the pocket groups. I think of it like, um, merchandising, right? So use like a i don't know use a franchise like star wars like something real big real obvious right it's this movie but then all of a sudden here's this toy with it yeah here's this video game with it, it. Keeps going. here are these books with it here's all these like creative avenues within this ip yep. that start coming about and it's like all right well we made this one video or movie right and now all of a sudden it's reviewed by this guy so there's a you know piece of information and then yeah, yeah. someone writes some fan fiction on it so it takes up like this thing and it, like that's kind of the same thing you're describing it's like yeah here's the 
the world creation of like Sam Sulek bodybuilder, right? Yeah, on yeah, YouTube. yeah. But then here's the rebroadcasting, the remixing of what yeah, he does yes. and how it keeps going. And uh -huh. you really can't, I don't, I'm sure there's somewhere that they can count that reach. Like Google AI can probably figure it out or Google can yeah. like access that information to get it. But like right now, like we're essentially doing Sam Sulek a favor, if you yeah, will, yeah. right? Like yeah, we're yeah. part of that same like snowball effect. I forget what that video game is where you just roll around and collect everything in the world too. But that, so yes, that's exactly. And it's like where I was going with the dick and fart jokes and the black <laughs> comedy and all that to tie this all back together. And the one liners and is like comedians that can use, you know, pull from aspects of all of those very specific pockets of comedy are the ones who end up being super, super successful in the general sense and also from the critical sense too as well. And I think that's exactly what we're seeing here with Sulik is like he's taking all those pockets, he's uniting them, and now that's creating what you just described yeah, of this. Like, you get this monolith yeah, snowball just like, rolling wow, down. There's, and it's, it's interesting. It's like what is it that makes him, is it just like the over the top stuff? Is it? Well, it kind of looks like John Cena a little bit, his face. I was just noticing that. It's really low key. I could just be making that up because I'm going to see <laughs> WWE soon. <laughs> you want him to look like John Cena? Yeah, Mr. Cena won't be there. All right. Do you want to, I think Jason has a video queued up for yeah, us to. Yeah, let's see this. So this is. To react to. There's a Sam Sulek club. Yeah. All right, so yeah, Jason just, I don't know if you can hear him he's talking about a clip channel. Yeah. So like that's that same idea, like, hey, yeah. I'm going to start a channel, or someone started a channel where I'm just going to, yeah, fans. just taking clips of this guy's content, yep. putting it up, and it's like, oh, here we're repopulating them now. They're like, sort of like how a meme spreads, right? So what is this title? I oh. mean, that, that title too, clips yeah. that made Sam Sulek famous, that's such a freaking... What do we call those titles in, I feel like, I mean, it's just like, yeah. It's a good title. It's yeah. a great title. So busy. That really All right, Jonah. Hey, what don't distract my spotter. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm yeah, so I'll let it slide this time. Like, <laughs> 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 It's funny that the plates were metal, too. Does this remind Sam me of the machine? Sam just broke the machine. Yes, I broke the machine. What, when did you safe. break a machine? Tell me that story. Pause it, Jason. I want to hear about Dane breaking a machine. Um, I broke the seated row machine, or I forget if it was in the seated row or lap pull down, but it was, it was almost exactly like that. You like broke I, the lap pull down. To be fair, I might have had the whole stack on there. I actually think I might have, and I went to pull, and it was just like I almost hit myself in the face. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did have the whole stack. You had it all stacked. I up. was doing a workout with. Was that the one with Ian? Yeah, yeah. And he, did Jason get it filmed then too? He did. He did have it on film. Oh wow! Clip that in there, Jason, if you can, right now. Put it in there. <laughs> Here at Garage Strength, we always preach the importance of nutrition and a healthy diet to create a strong, fueled athlete. That's why we're happy to work with today's sponsor, Range Meal Bars. Range Meal Bars can act as meal replacements if you're on the go or packing up for long hikes in the woods. Each Range Bar is barely bigger than a deck of cards, but packs 700 calories each. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of calories. Like, you could go trekking for minutes and a, not just A minutes, long like, trek. Hours. hours that could even get you through the desert <laughs> yes probably <laughs> range bars use all natural high quality ingredients like honey molasses nut butters and chia not brown rice syrup and soy protein isolate like many of the other bars available and are certified gluten free being perfectly honest we've been trying these for a few weeks now and our employees love them and are smashing them so much so that some of the employees eat them all when i come home and i can't try them <laughs> that's accurate we finished our first two boxes in a week i didn't have any of them until the next round came in and we had to keep them away hidden in our closet for podcasting literally range meal bars is offering a killer 20 percent off deal for listeners of the garage strength podcast just apply the discount code Garage Strength, that's a capital G and a capital S there, at checkout. 
Thanks, Range, for sponsoring our podcast. Now, let's get back to the episode. Woo-hoo. Is he actually crying yeah. in this clip? Yeah. Oh, it's. I think he just like drank something. It's nothing. Yeah, but he's crying though. I don't think he's actually. Uh. Right. The guy who likes walking is going to walk further than the guy who likes the destination. You understand? Yeah, because and the that's um, where he's going. It's easy to say. You know, it's easy to say this motivational shit or whatever. It's harder to put it into practice. I don't know if I could take... It almost feels like he's like... A, that was comedic in his delivery. Are you talking, are you talking to me? He's, apparently he's waving at someone. You can't... It says interact with email, but we can't One million. email. This shit. I think that's the other thing is like he... Standard leg day is normal. No, that's fucking badass. Don't See, think look, I'm, he uh, looks like John Cena. I don't think yeah, I take it for granted. Like but, I mean, kind of fitting my I was also philosophy. wondering, like, is he going to cut his hair for bodybuilding? Like, I feel like that's not a big thing. Like, well, not, you can't have long hair. In bo- it's not a, Doesn't that Kai Green guy have the big long? Yeah, but it's it, not. It It's a different setup, I feel like. He's just wiping himself down. Look, there's the, look, see it? Yeah, All the duct tape good. on it. That is good. Wait, is that a camera behind that camera, though? No, it's a That's mirror. a mirror. Oh. Got it. You dumbass. Whatever. <laughs> it was an optical illusion. It was at first. Uh... Oh, he has a kitty. Oh, nice. What's the cat's name, Sam? I don't know. He's holding a cat up. There's a dog back there. Look at this. This is pretty sick. I have seen this. This is what? Is that the three meter? Two. What is that called? It. Double pike? Or is that a two yeah. and a half? That was two and a half. Gains to come. What is this? What do I got here? Oh, <laughs> finally fucking got dextrose again. <laughs> God damn it. You want some? You want some? Oh, hands. too slow. That's something my eight year old would do. I think Man. it's important to mention here that each of these videos are between 40 and 90 minutes long and he posts daily. Daily posting, 40 to 90 minute videos long. No cuts. No editor. His videos are that long. So I'm a little bit blessed in that sense. I'm never he really camera roll alone 15, when I'm lifting. Straight, doesn't cut. But in all honesty, I mean, that's, that's where you really got to push it. I don't know if he's necessarily my cup of tea off of that one. He's funny. I, I think I'd like him as a comedian, straight up. This isn't crazy what goes on here. So there's a video of him with, what is that, 405 on the bar? On an incline, what did you say, that's like a 30 degree or is that a 45 degree incline there? What was that video? Some strongman stuff. Oh, I thought they were, I thought they were climbing poles. Yeah, incline 405 for reps is extraordinarily hard. That's pretty close grip too. It is a partial rep though, right? He's a huge partial guy and a full yeah. range motion guy too. What? Five's pretty impressive, but six is pretty impressive, and he's not quitting yet. Dude, that's. Oh really? That's crazy. That dude was getting scared. Yeah, he's like, I can't deadlift this. You better keep pushing, Sam. Yeah, it's that. That's interesting. I mean, oh, that's, look, that's a huge incline. Oh, is this how he does those, like the biker like squats yeah, or whatever? I've seen him do this, like super narrow stance, heels elevated on a plate, and then you just squat full depth. Yeah, it's just a wicked quad pump when you do it like that. I've even seen him where he's just sitting there, like, just like in the double bounce. Yeah, like, I like a hair bottom higher. position. What is that? I can't tell how many plates that is. I want to say angle. that's five. Five. Oh, I can do one, dude. It's a lot of weight. There's five plates on there plus the twenty fives, right? Just doing this at a commercial gym. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was pretty easy, dude. 
I wonder if he put on lifters and did that too. If it would be even like if he would get the heal up even more and would target the quad even more. I haven't been counting how many reps he's been doing, but it's almost 10 at this point, yeah, right? It's a lot. What do you think about this thing? I love this. I think it's great. I also think like he's got really good mobility. Like he's Like how positive he is with himself. Yeah, yeah. That was a good one, man. Good job, Sam. Yeah. Like, let me pat myself on the yeah, back for yeah. that. I think, you know, I, I, I want to call that out. I think that's an important lesson. Like, your self-talk when you lift. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Like, I can talk to me personally. Like, I will pump myself up yeah. while I'm doing it. All right. Like, I, and I'll curse at myself. Like, come on. Yeah. You can do one more. Yeah, rip this. Come on. Like, you got this. You know, I'll say it out loud. I'll sit there and visualize myself, like, hitting the lift. And I know sometimes too, like I'll do the opposite, and I know I'm already like screwed. Like I'll I think, I think the opposite. Dude, the only time I, I was actually thinking of it, it's funny. I, I was thinking about this when I ran the marathon. There was one point where I was like, "You can't effing quit. You effing." I don't know if we're allowed to swear on here. I don't know. Uh, Jason dropping our dropping the p word like yeah for like a mile, and then all of a sudden I was like, "Oh, you can do this, dude. You can do it." Like. Yo, you can do it. And it's it's exactly that. Like, I used to get so mad and lose my mind. And it's not effective. It's like, but no. if you're like, dude, you can do this. The the more frequently that you believe that you that you have that optimism, the more it and becomes reality. You know, positive to him, too, is like he's showing himself doing it out loud. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like talking yeah, to himself big. out loud versus just in his head. And um, were you, wait, were you down there when Junior was doing this? Were you there yet? No. Okay, so Junior was doing that today. And I was like. Did you just say that, like, now it's time to become a champion? And he's like, yeah, dude, I've been saying this every day. Like, I, like I'm on this now, Dane. Like, do you not believe me? Like, he literally starts, <laughs> like, coming at me. Do you not believe me when I say I want to snatch 160? And I was like, dude, I believe you. But you haven't really ever done this consistently. And now I'm like, I was, like, getting all hyped it's up. It's a little cognitive dissonance, right? Yeah. Like, I want this. Yeah. I want this, but I'm not used to this person. Yeah. And everybody, like, Devin and Evan were like, you didn't hear him last week when he, like, you were gone the last two days. You should have heard him last week what he was saying about holding himself accountable. It's like, dude, let's let's go, Junior. <laughs> yeah, good for him, And man. you need to watch some Sam Sulek to and get this if, even more. You know, that's something, too, to, like, dive into. Just, like self-talk yeah like positive huge, self-talk huge. goes a long yeah. way towards success absolutely i think this is it's fun it's fun watching this because it's like if there's other younger kids watching this now that's what they're gonna see and i think that was one of the downfalls like back in the 90s like come up it was like always like just more much more so goon squad like me yeah and, like get like you would be like get mad get angry you know, screw my girlfriend. She broke up with me and cheated on me for the other guy. Like, I'm going to bench an extra two sets. But, like, but like that that's how it was, you know? Yeah. See, I, I've never been a rah-rah person. Yeah, I've, I mean, I haven't been either. I'm a silent, like, hey, you can do this. Get it done. Why is he leaning to the side? He oh, because he has the single leg. Yeah, so he's getting a little bit more. Stretch. Yeah. A little bit more stretch on that. There are some old school leg extensions that have straps. Like a belt. They have a belt. Oh, right into sissy squats. My man wow, is a that's savage. Good. Yeah, that's good. Dane won't do this. That's why his quads are so small now. Okay. Calves are Facts. big. He would have did calf raises there, what? though. Yeah, that's probably accurate. <laughs> so one, one big thing people say oh. Is oh, so Jason just let us know that he's like, check. The people who are watching him are young teenagers. Or, well, I guess older teenagers. So he's which kind is, of which is great. Yeah, like, dude, that's like exactly. Oh wow, he doesn't even go to. He just stays under tension the whole time. Now the the argument here is the only downfall of that is strictly bodybuilding, and also his nutrition is outrageous. Like yeah, insane, insane. What does so he like, do? I, I don't know like much about it. A full gallon of milk every day, like. And then he has, like, bowls of cereal that are, like, literally the size of a mixing bowl. Like, absurd amounts of... And I, like, not to bring this... I mean, yes, to bring this up. 
a lot of people are like, he's eating so much he's on trend or, or something else along those lines. It's very potent. Uh, I think Halo's the other one. But it's also like, I think high school kids watching this, if they just go in and they incline bench more and they do leg extensions and they're doing squats and they're watching, like, do more power to them. Or Who like cares? fight for another rep. Yeah, type of like thing. that's like, it. That's all how that to matters. Grind like, something. And and he does talk about now. His nutrition is absurd, but he also does talk about like making sure you're eating enough and sleeping enough. He's all the positive. He, it's like super upbeat, and it's like low key though too. I actually, I I think that's part of the the allure is how positive he is. Uh -huh. Like, I've watched I've watched two videos with Hostile. I think sponsors him. Yeah. And I've watched like two or three of their documentaries where they where they go follow him around for the day. Um, and he's got like it's almost like there's two guys trying to be his mentor. And he's just like super, super laid back. And it's literally like you just you end up like like some of the other guys are like, hey, this guy's a little sort of a little bit of a tool of the other guys. Yeah. But the but he makes he makes it that much more attractive because he is so positive. So. There's some of him eating it up here, but I want to start talking about just bodybuilding because, like, athletes, coaches, like, one of the things I think we caught out of the reacting or two of the things that came out of there was, one, the positive self-talk. I'm looking at hostile subs. <laughs> and Shut up, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the second one was he will grind through reps. So, yeah, the, like, there's yeah, a, yeah. a toughness yes, there, yes, too. Yes, yep. And how then, like, athletes coming up. And the volume. And coaches can, like, use that yeah. within their system. So, like, I know with garage, the use of structural bodybuilding is a big thing. Yeah. Around, like, sort of joints to help prevent injuries, accessory hypertrophy movements, and things of that nature. So, what can we take from Mr. Sulik and probably even the world of bodybuilding more in general and use for our athletes then, too? So yeah. You want to educate us on that one a little I bit I mean, right away like the the full range squats all the time but but as far as i think the bodybuilding stuff like i've seen him doing partial lower back work i've seen him doing partial work with his biceps and i think that what would you use like if i was like all right tell me what sport partial bicep work would be beneficial wrestling. for why would it be beneficial because you're almost constantly in the elbow flexion okay like, almost all the time so what would be like a specific exercise to do a shorter just like a shorter easy curl so, like standing almost so constantly in the the l position yeah, like, like at 90 degrees just like slightly past slightly so you're under. almost like pulsing there like yeah through yeah that. yeah yeah so almost like i want to say like the 45 to the 135 yeah. like back and forth yeah and i would i would actually do a time set with it oh so it's how long would you do it would you do it like a tabata like scramble here you get to rest scramble yeah there. i mean you could i and i think that's like learning from him like from Sulik, I would if I have kids come in and ask because I could imagine high school football players asking yeah. about it. We would do stuff at the end of the workout, very bodybuilding specific. Like for me, all right, we're gonna do leg extensions, we're gonna do sled pull backwards, and then we're gonna do sissy squats, and we're gonna go through that four times, and no one's allowed to rest. You know, your rest period is like walking from here to there, and like. That is how bodybuilders train. And I, I've talked about, you know, when we tried to, we tried to do that Tennessee Jed plug in that one, the one oh, bodybuilding yeah. <laughs> video. I don't even know if we filmed that video, by the way. Um, but the, the whole point of that was coming home and training with Jed. Um, and actually, I've, I just saw him recently. It was so hard compared to the sports performance stuff. But if you are training sports performance, to move fast or to move heavyweight and then also doing the bodybuilding stuff dude you're getting mental training mental reps yeah in like three or four different zones and you work that like so the like local muscle fatigue then too that yeah. happens During specific wrestling. to a sport it's like, like it's it would yeah exactly you had told i remember a story you told about quiz telling you my, doing a finisher and he's like my forearms feel like i'm at, at the, the end, end of, of a match. match yep yeah so exactly. like just that whole like rip it on the head and stuff and that's why you see what i, I swear i see the russians doing it all the time or some eastern block like old eastern block country where they use like the tricep pull down machine yeah, yeah. and they're just like snapping Snap down. it down Snap like downs, super yeah. hard like it's yeah. full body movement yep and like it's just loaded up with it yeah yeah um, 
All right, I think we're going to go into the Freak of the Week, so more right. video reactions. The Freak for of the Week. our listeners uh, on audio things. What are you listening on? You can listen on, like, iTunes, right? Do we what use else? Spreaker? Does that exist? What else Spreaker? can we listen to? Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and... The ch- Google, Google Play. Google, Google okay. Play. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, is Title One? Isn't that one? Or am I making uh, I that? just, dude, I listen on, when I listen on podcasts, I use my phone, my Apple, uh, my Apple podcast. The Apple podcast. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I usually yeah. just watch it on YouTube. I do that too. Because <laughs> I also just figured out how to lock my phone. Yeah. And, and get the video off and still listen to it. Oh, nice. On YouTube. Doesn't Amazon have a, an Audible like for things too? Well, I guess Audible. Like Prime? Yeah, Audible. Yeah, you yeah. can put like the podcast on there too. Maybe I don't know. Did you just make that up? No, I I was looking for a podcast I listened to, and it was and, it was, and when the link I clicked on was on Amazon. Okay, and I was like, what? And yeah. it, it's that's like, just what? where my remembrance brain of like the images <laughs> yeah. went to. I can show you that yeah. after this if we need to. All right, All right, Freak of the Week. Who do we got? This is from. So you know to enter the Freak of the Week. It's on the Discord. You have to join our Discord. If you're already on our Discord, you have access to it. You go to the podcast little hashtag, and then there's one that says Freak of the Week submissions, and you just put videos on there, and then we select from the videos. So far, well, I guess when this one's coming out, this is our third Freak of the yeah. Week we got. Um, this dude's doing three exercises here, it looks like. Yeah, looks we like got three. Who is it? Is Jason. A, looks like a clean. Koala. 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 And Koala is pretty active, too. I know that. Kid on Koala. the Kid Koala, great I saw producer. him live open up for Jack Johnson and Ben Harper, and then really, Cri- yeah, he just went great, up there with a great opening act, turntables, and one of the best basically played and- Deltron thirty yeah, thirty like all say. all the instrumentals <laughs> and like just no Dell on there. <laughs> so. So Those that, of you listening, that would be, he did a clean into it like a Zurch or Kesh. Yes. <laughs> That's like a <laughs> dude. The guy who lifts in jeans, he actually just uh, commented. Uh, yeah, is that yeah. is that his name? Atlas Power, Atlas Power He always Power has his shirt off and boots on. Yeah, he does. He does that. Dude will okay. do that with like dude does that with like three thirty. Actually, the other dude. Too, what does that feel like? Just landing in your bicep like that? Oh my goodness! There's a guy named Will on Instagram. Uh, what the diesel guy? Uh, like yes. diesel? Like who Will, used to Will protect Sean Michaels? No, get out of here. <laughs> Will Rattel does Kevin this Nash. as well. Like, why well, I, I could not li- remember his last oh. name. All right, second one. So what was that? Oh, clean uh, split clean split power clean. What's going on here? I was hoping. Uh, so he splits with his left leg forward and then jerks with his right leg forward. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. He's so eagle eyed. Left. Because yeah. it looked awkward with his left leg going yeah. forward. And then he goes right. Oh, that was pretty creative. I'm still, I can't get over the, catching the power clean in the Zercher. I can't get over this. <laughs> How heavy is that? Uh, I think like it might be like 185, 175. Yeah. Mike. <laughs> Man, oh my! My elbows hurt watching that. I was standing what thirty? What's that other? Is that fifty inches or forty six? Probably forty six. Yeah. Yeah. Do pretty good jumps though. And he got three of them too. Yeah, that's solid. Standing so kid up. koala, well done. Yeah. Nice, nice split clean into that other reverse split jerk. I would want to know why is he doing the Zercher catch? Because it's, I don't know. That's kind of like a, I think that would be a weird like a flex on someone. Like it, if someone did that to me, okay. I'd be like, this, it's a this flex. person's serious. I want to see him clean three hundred pounds before he does that. Uh, dude, that's heavy. You're you're too sports oriented yeah, here. Yeah, that's fair. This is just like a freak he's, of the week type. Yeah, of he's having stuff. fun. And he, that's fair. Yeah. I gotta get the he's one hundred percent. Those clips are freakish. Yeah, he's the. Koala, you, my friend, are definitely this week's Freak of the Week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, you ready for the overrated, underrated? Yeah, let's go. All right. Cable rows, overrated, underrated. Underrated, dude. Cable rows are so freaking good. They're so fun. You get a crazy pump. Underrated. <laughs> All right. Um, dumbbell rows. 
Overrated. I think dumbbell underrated. rows are underrated. Dude, people don't do it. The, the, like, and this is the other thing. Okay. There was a dude who transitioned to become a woman. His name was Matt Croc. His last name was like Krokashevsky or something. Dude was an animal. Okay. Before he transitioned, he's still, still a beast. Absolute animal. Okay. So there was back in like the mid 2000s, there was this thing called the Croc Row. And Croc would do like sets of 30 dumbbell rows. Like you grab all, the heaviest one, you strap up, and you're just hitting it for like sets of 30. I to this day still think that's one of the best ways to get a pump in your back pump and i think it also helps is that the one that the chinese weightlifters do all the time yeah that's essentially what it looks like right they just wrap up huge dumbbell and just start yeah just ripping and that like to me back on like in the t nation days that was like a crock row all right um overrated underrated single arm lap pull downs hmm another cable one I would say it's underrated because no one really uses them, and I I think they do have some sub like substantial sports performance carryover, and you can also lengthen the lat more than you can with bilateral lat pull. What's the like? So, if you had to pick one thing of the athletic sport pullover, what would you say why to do it? Like canoeing, okay, <laughs> <laughs> kayaking. Yeah, that was in our video. Oh, okay, doing, yeah, I was even thinking of a wrestler just going for like, sure. Reaching that arm like to grab the leg or yes. ankle pick or yeah, something too. Exactly. Same. I've been watching a lot of wrestling. It's the same Dude, mechanics. I watched a San Diego State or San Diego. It's the SD that messes me South up. Dakota. South Dakota, yeah. Ohio State, Matt. Dual meet. No, they just had a. Uh, I swear it was like I watched. Well, they didn't it. wrestle Ohio State. What? Minnesota. Minnesota, yeah. And I was yeah. like, "What? You guys yes. had it. Yes. You had it. Did they? Well, they so they lost their." Their number two guy was banged up. He, it, it's like, yes. The was it the one thirty three pounder though who just and murked the the they, Minnesota kid? Just like I was like, oh, the strength program's working. So forty one is where they their guy, um, their number two guy Clay Carlson wasn't in the match. Okay. There's also it's interesting you bring that up too because there's also a little bit of bad blood between the head coach at SDSU and Minnesota because he went to Minnesota and was a two time national champ or three time national champ there. Oh, so he's been wanting to, dude. They had it. Yeah, they last year they did the same thing. Oh, yeah. Well, it's always next year. All right, either or. This one's a silly one. I don't even know if you'll ha- you you better have these if you don't. You have to choose one of the two. Okay. We're going with like Philly suburb bands, Philly bands. Okay. War Somewhat on drugs. popular. All right. Kurt Vile and the Violators or the War on Drugs. War on Drugs. Man, you would go with the mainstream answer. Oh, get the dude. They get the mainstream. Do you know both of them played in one another's bands too? I did not know that. Yeah. No. Kurt Vile was the lead guitarist in War on Drugs, and I forget the dude's name in the War on Drugs, but he was the lead guitarist. I just know for when, Kurt Vile and the Violators. When they came up, I was, it was like. Probably like the peak of pitchfork media like yeah. back in the day. And like, dude, I just, that's the type of like, at the time, indie, like psychedelic, like maybe. I think the war on drugs is better now than they were they then. Were, I'm trying the to music's think, way better. They almost remind me of like Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, uh, um, like a, a psychedelic yeah. type. They're more hazy Shoes, psychedelic, shoe-gazy, though. Shoegazy psychedelic. Shoegazy. See, I think the war on drugs is more like hazy, though, or like the they're not as heavy psychedelic. Like yeah. it's not like a Jimi Hendrix psychedelic. No, no, absolutely not. It's more like it's just like shoe-gazy. let me just lay down on the yeah. couch, yeah, and enjoy this. All right. No, I was supposed to go. I had my brother had tickets to go see the war on drugs, but they were predicting like a huge snowstorm, and it's like, are we gonna go? And and we're like, nah. Yeah. never snowed oh that sucks yeah i was just offered the ticket because yeah. like it ended up backing out so i was gonna just get to go like i didn't have it till like day of so i wasn't as like flummoxed about it <laughs> flummoxed but he was all right audience questions and then and then it's it's a wrap yeah all right we got one for, both of them from discord liquidarity very uh he's like a level 12 on our discord i think at this point or something like that uh Andrew. Yeah. I'd like to hear some thoughts on off-season training for athletes. Should they do multiple cycles of periodization or one long cycle? I assume it depends on the length of the seasons, but I'm curious to hear Earl and Dane walk through that. 
What I do, what I would say, like look, looking at football, you would do two cycles, two basic, I mean, almost two and a half. You would do, right? Uh, I think when we laid that out, it was. It depends through, on how long the season is, right? Yeah. Yeah, it depends on if the season ends in November, you probably can start in December. And then you would go basically, first cycle is up till like combine stuff in April. And then second cycle would be April until August. Yeah. And well, I think that. Let's say, in, yeah, off season. Yeah. So for me, it's like. For track, it could be the junctures. You know, track's a lot longer of a season. It could be you're throwing basically from February until freaking potentially August. It's that long, so yeah. you're only looking at like one and a half full cycles off season. And and in that case, you've got to. In in my opinion, with with the throwers, what we do is basically three to four months of like strictly high volume, like going back between exposure and comprehension, and then two bridge programs that could be up to like nine weeks that focus more on like heavier movement patterns yeah. heavier lifts and all your throwers too they're in season is like it's professional at this yeah too it's yeah. not yeah so there's a different go from there absolutely um, next one discord i don't know if we quite answered that for you liquidarity but it depends on the length of your if we season did, he can ask in our youtube lives and i'll answer yeah you hear that? Dane says talk to him in the YouTube lives. Yeah. Everyone else can go to the YouTube lives as well. Yeah. Um, this one's Penn State Nittany Lions on the Discord. How does someone get that name? Like, you know what I mean? I, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Good for them. Um, how often should I add weight when doing like strength cluster sets or just any strength training in general for like squats or cleans? Wait, say this again. How often should I add weight when doing like strength cluster sets or just any strength training in general for like squats or cleans? I would go every two sets. Add if weight. If not every other set or every set. But Man, it's like. Can I give them a personal example? Yeah. So yesterday I'm back squatting and I'm ramping a set of four. Yeah. I knew where I worked my set the week before. I wanted to do two sets before I got to that. So it was like 150, 155, 160. Perfect. And I knew I had two left to see where I could go. And I knew um, the 150 felt like hell. Like I had nothing to do with it. I was like, well, if 155 feels that way, I don't have a PR on me today. Yeah. I hit that. I was like, oh, it felt good. I was like, all right. It was just the 30 kilo jump to get to the working set type of thing. And then it was like, all right, how much do I add? I'm like, well, I know where I want to be. Yeah. Do I want the a bigger jump or a smaller jump in between? Right. Or and an the, equal. Yeah. And that was basically my deciding point there. Yeah. Now I also have years versus like this person maybe knew. Yeah, I think they could go do almost exactly what you did and then maybe just go an equal split all the way up. Yeah. Um and see how they feel. And then two like sometimes also you, you could do two sets. In your case, you could do two sets at like one fifty eight, one sixty, and then make a big jump. Yeah. That last set. Cause I've done that. Like, good. so like I've ran, like ramping a set of nine, right? Like you don't want to be the top weight. You don't want the second weight being close to that No, because no, it's it, awful. It, you'll die. So like something like higher reps, like I'll take a huge jump to Just go to get for it broke. And get it done. Yeah. But like doubles and singles, it's like, well, I might take three kilo jump Just to get up there. Yeah. Yep. Um, no, I think, I think you that... as a coach too, you're governing, you're seeing how there's the speed is, how the movement is. So that's the other thing, too. You could always get a coach, download the Peak Strength app. There you go. And Absolutely. rate the difficulty, and it will tell you how much weight to add there. And that's getting even more dialed in after, like, the next month, actually, Trevor. Because it's getting all the – It's getting improved. All the data from everyone, yeah. too. Yes. It's learning. So it's getting better and better. It's getting so smarter. Use that to improve your overall rep and weight selection. Make sure you do do some – partials and crazy full range of motion just like sam Sulik. maybe don't eat as crazy as him but engage and have fun Talk with that that positive. that positive optimism until next time peace <laughs>